Good night, Smart, and welcome to your favorite online internet program, www.sxmtalk.com. Of course, I'm your host, Christopher Emanuel, and let me welcome everyone to the program. Happy that you're here tonight. And I must be honest, I must be honest with each and everyone out there. This is one of the first nights that I'm here on the program, and I'm actually battling with my thoughts as to what to talk about. One of the first nights I actually don't know what to talk about. And the things that I do have in mind is just, yes, they are they, they, very important, but short, you know? I have noticed recently, over the last couple of weeks though, and you know, we, we have been sending out condolences straight from this program when you see what is happening to our young men on the island with motorbikes and scooters and stuff like that. And I don't know if it's something that's just gonna continue to happen all the time over and over and over, but um, I've lost a couple of friends these last weeks. You know, the last young guy, I mean, just the other day, we, we, were, we were together because we was working together. So you really don't know, you really don't know what to say, you really don't know what to tell them, you know, whether it's to wear a helmet, whether it's to be careful, or whether, what it is. But St. Martin have lost a lot of men, and young men, over this past year, and we have started off the new year on not, a, not such of a good note. And I hope it doesn't really continue like this, because a lot of families are moaning and crying, and are very very sad right now but anyway we can get into the discussion of parliament opening yesterday and we had the the delegation that came from Trinidad to talk about the university and I was part of that sit in because not only was I happy to see certain faces that's the university that's the school that i went to and at the time even though it's usc now you know university of southern caribbean it was caribbean union college at the time in trinidad and i know dr drew paul i don't know the dean dr c valley he wasn't there at the time when i was there but drew paul was there he was a, a professor he was a teacher at the time, so from the moment he saw me in the parliament building, he kind of shrank his eyes and he said, Emmanuel, and I said, Dr. Drupal, how are you doing? He said, I'm glad to see you. So it was um, sort of a good, good time to see old faces and hear them talk about the university and stuff like that. But I could tell you one thing, I could tell you one thing though, right? I am bitterly disappointed, bitterly disappointed in some of our members of parliament. I got to say I was pleased with the questions that came from France. France was, was basically the only individual that asked a question concerning the university. What is it all about? But the person that I was bitterly disappointed in was Mr. De Weaver. Mr. De Weaver would look at the delegation, they're explaining what they are here for, why they're here, who they are. He's still going to ask a question, in what capacity are they here? And I, I was like, oh my goodness. You know, and the reason why I'm saying that, but then again, I should, I should know better because I want to say that members of parliament are supposed to be smart, or if not smart, they're supposed to be better than what we have in terms of speaking and in terms of asking questions and stuff like that, but no, I should know better. That's not true, okay? Because you got someone there like Ruth Douglas and, and, and oh my goodness, man. I wonder if people have been listening in the world on the internet as to what they have be saying because, and then again, this is the opening, this, you see? This is to tell you the type of respect that even certain members of parliament have for the society, for the country, right? 
I don't know how many of you watched the Parliament session yesterday. This is the opening of Parliament. This is the first meeting of Parliament for the new year. We are talking about Parliament, the highest legislative body on the island, where decisions are made, amendments. Do you know? Here comes Dr. Ruth Douglas in her casual clothes, walking with a hat, sitting down in, in Parliament, sit down, act, and got a hat on her head, and, and I'm saying to myself, you know, it was it was it was oh, it was the highest form of embarrassment to me. I could imagine the delegation over there sitting, looking and saying, "But these are members of Pat." The woman walking, probably in casual, in clothes like like you come off of the street, bags in her hand. You know, and I'm saying to myself, "What kind of respect do you have for this body? What kind of respect do you have for this body?" And I was. To me, it was shameful. It was cheap to use those terms. You know, you're walking with. You can't have young people. You, if you come inside Parliament building with a cap on your head, they tell you to take it off. Yeah, yeah, you should take it off. Here comes a member of Parliament. Gone in to the pews, sitting down with a cap on her head. You know, it was it was it was ridiculous. It was shameful, and it was just looking cheap. And I guess this is the reason why our country is the way it is, because there's no accountability. There's no accountability. I haven't seen this in all different parliamentary sessions. You would see on television throughout the Caribbean, in the world, in the States, in, in Europe, in all. You don't, you don't get this sort of, of, of lack of respect for the office or the institution that you're part of. I'm not saying you're coming there with your Gucci this and you go, I mean, but come in there looking decent. It, it, it was just shameful. It was like she was just in town shopping. And oh yes, I remember we have a meeting today and let me just come inside and sit down in a meeting. And we, we, have a, we have a delegation there from the region. You know, I mean, we should show an example. So now, what are you going to tell a young person coming in now? And they have a cap on their head. Take it off. You can't tell them. You can't tell them nothing. You can't tell them take it off because you wasn't setting the example. And that's the problem we have in this country. To me, it was, to me it was ridiculous. Seriously. It was ridiculous. But, um... I fully understand what they were talking about because, like I said, I went to that university, I went to that college, and a very, 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 very nice place at the time. I'm talking about from since 1992. As a matter of fact, I attended high school there. And, you know, at the time, St. Martin, you don't have A levels and stuff like that. I, I, I attended high school there and um, was about to go into college, and then my mom passed away. So a year after I left out of college and came back to St. Martin and then went on to Holland. So I was happy that they was back here and they are trying to sort of reconnect because St. Martin did have that connection at one point in time where we had a number of students that got scholarships to travel to Trinidad to further their studies in the university, but at that time, like I said, it was Caribbean Union College, so they lost that connection. So it's a good thing for them to get back and stuff and, and move on. Independence for Sabre Station is a complete utopia. Now, you know, these are the type of things when you look at the Dutch and you just ask the Dutch the question, right? Who do they think they are? If one man decide to leave his parents' house, why are you saying that he shouldn't? He should not go. Mm. Saber and Stacia have a right, have a God-given right. It's a natural attribute to want to govern yourself. And we have a, f we have a few countries in Holland, I'm mean, sorry, in Europe, that still feel that it's right that in this time and age, it is good for them to hold on to colonies. But I'll say one thing, though. 
I don't think St. Martin people understand the concept of independence. And when we when we talk about independence, we all get scared. And the first thing that comes to everyone's mind is a passport. A passport. We're going to be able to travel. And I remember having a discussion with a few of my friends and say, boy, I want to hold on to my passport. And I always tell them that it doesn't belong to you. If you read the content of the passport good, you would see that it belongs to the Queen of Holland. It doesn't belong to you. You're, we, we, we are like subjects, and we have permission to use her passport. And then you would hear them say, yeah, but I, 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 I'd like to, I want to be able to travel. And I say, but Kittitians as travel, Haitians as travel, Dominicans as travel, Trinidadians as travel, Jamaicans as travel. I mean, hell, they're all over the world. So what makes us feel that we won't be able to travel? Yeah, but I don't like the hassle. See, we have become so, I don't even know what, how, how, how to put it. Right? But this is what happens when we are confused and don't want to be on our own. But I understand the situation because we look at St. Martin at a small place and how are we going to get this done and how are we going to get that done? And the question is how we have been getting it done all the time. You hear them say it over and over, yeah, but the mother country, this and the mother country, and I repeat it, Holland is not the mother country of St. Martin. It's more like an like a adopted, wicked stepmother or something like that, if you want to put it. But it could never be the mother country. It could never be the country. Because they are colonialists, they colonize country, they impose their rules on people. And I don't understand. In this day and age, you still have a group of yeah because um the last program we did i forget to tell my engineer that i got a message saying that um i'm raising racial tension in the country you know but i'm going to say this i'm going to say it like this anyway because you have a set of white people telling black people how and what they should live and it's a serious way. It's always going to be a problem. Always. There's always going to be a confrontation because you're always going to believe that one is better than the other. You see? But if that is what Saber and Stacia want, I say thumbs up. They, much, they have more guts and more balls than what we have here in St. Martin because we just feel that Holland is our savior for everything that we want. What we want to talk about, though, is that uh, we will be starting our program where we'll be coming out in the community. And yes, there it is. Send us your emails. Send us your emails. Call the number and uh, uh, you know and tell us what is it or uh, where, because we can come to your home. We can come on your porch. We can come to your business. We can come in your area. We can come in your district. Right? Let us talk. You know? Show us what is going on in the areas. It's time for us to, to, to be open. Because a lot of things is going on in this. A lot of things is happening here. And like they say, seeing is believing. So anyone who wants us to be in your area, in your district, send us an email. Send us a message. Let us know. And we can come down or come to your area. And we can have that discussion and we can have that talk and stuff like that. If not, we're going to pick an area and we'll come there and we'll do a show in that area. And like I said, it's free. It, th there's no cost to it. All right, we want to take it to another level. We want to, 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 to expand our coverage with St. Martin Talk. So like I said, you can hear me sort of pulling things to have a discussion tonight. And I do have to send out my apologies for the shortness of the program that we have been having. My, my, my engineer keep telling me I got to do much better than that. And yes, I have to do much better than that. All right. But we will be getting back to power. We will be getting things online. We will be streaming and getting us back to that whole hour. We had more of a, 
how should I say? Because you, you, you see, you see what happened at a time, right? There were so many things to talk about, so many issues to talk about. It was hot. Politics was going crazy. Who wasn't jumping here? Who wasn't farming here? Who wasn't doing this here? You know, everything was steaming up. And, and listen, it's it, it going to get back that way, you know, because you you're hearing little things going on. You're just waiting. You're waiting to hear because. Campaign start already, you know. Campaign already start. Like I heard that um, on my, my, my partner, Billy D, Friday, a big pot going to boss because they're going to have Michael, not Michael, um, what's his name? Uh, Myers, Franklin Myers. is going to be on the program. He's going to boss the pot with 100 million who took a bribe or something, 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 something. He's going to boss some pot. So you know, it, 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 it already start already, okay? People threatening to take me to court because I call them cockroaches. I ain't call nobody cockroaches. I say, they, I say, all of a sudden, it's like cockroaches, okay? You can have your house nice and clean and looking good, but from the moment you get some flit and you move that chair or that cabinet where you move for a while or that, that dresser, all of a sudden you see the cockroaches, them running out and they move in. And you're starting to spray. I mean, listen, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Right? In all the years, in all the years, Tia Heidegger has been in government and Maurice Lake has been his assistant in all the years. Right? I don't think that gentleman came up with more than five articles in the newspaper. In years. And if he did, you probably get one article every six months. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, you can expect an article from him every week now. He can't stay on the sidelines no more. He wants to work for his country and contribute. Okay? He wants to be part. He, you don't want to contribute to nothing. You don't want to work for the... You, you, you. Listen, it's all about him and he's in it for himself. Now they're running all over the place. That's why I say it's like cockroaches. I don't have to explain myself. But all of a sudden now, everybody, everybody is talking about they want to contribute. They want to be part of the system. They want to help their country. Come on, St. Martin, serious, let me tell you the truth. Right? They don't want to help no country. They don't want to be part of no system. They don't have nothing in it for you. It's all about themselves. And I tell people, right, I tell people over and over, look at an individual. You tell me what it is Maurice Lake has contributed to this society. Oh, the university, this, and he has been on this board, and he has been doing this. Doing what? Doing what? All you have been is a, is a let me, you guys know what's a Gomorrah? A go, yeah, Gomorrah, I think the word is. Uh, a Gomorrah, Gonorrah, I think, but... A Gomorrah is a fish, right? It's a, it's, a, it's a small fish that latches on to the underbelly of a shark. It's like a parasite. So if this is a shark mouth, the fish would be here. And wherever the shark swims, he sticks on here. Why? You know why? Whatever the shark eats. So if the shark catch a seal or a whale or a dolphin... When the shark eating it, all the little remnants and the little pieces will fall off. The Gomorrah is right here and he does catch them. And that's his meal. So he don't have to work for his meal. He getting a free ride. A free pass. He getting his stomach full. It's like, it's like you know when you got that good long French bread. And you're slicing it up. And because French bread making a way, it does like, sort of like flake off. And then all of you, you take your hand and like, <laughs> dust off the table. You see those little flakes will fall? Right? That's what that boy, that, 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 that is how he survives. He latches on to T.O. He latches, he sticks on to T.O. He's like a Gomorrah fish. You see? So the life is sweet, but then opposition now, they're out. They're out now, they're in, they're out. So anger. You ain't got nothing to eat. You can't get nothing. 
They can't get nothing. That's why it says like cockroaches. They are they always latching on to something to feed off of it. And then you're talking about your contribution you make. Partner going to be a dog fight and come and, and come good. Come good with your punch and take I could tell you one thing. I you ain't chasing me. You see? I could imagine how many of you guys say, no, Chris, I shouldn't have gone here. That's a, that's a low blow. That's wrong. All right? But seriously, in all the years, you never hear the guy. You never hear the guy. What's your contribution to this country? What's the added value? What have you given back? But you're coming in big article, whole page now. A whole page in the article praising to you the leader with vision and he have done this and he have done that and past governments they ain't doing this and government before but partner you don't read what you write you is part of all the past governments you let me tell you something I had a discussion with some young ladies and they were saying all the leaders are the same. All the leaders are the same. All them looking for themselves. All them doing this and all them doing and all them grabbing. And you see, if I, if I have to come here and defend William Marlin, they're going to say I'm biased because he's my party leader, he's a leader. So I bias. And I don't want to be biased. I want to be fair. I am trying to be honest. I have a very hard time being honest when it comes to these things. Because it doesn't matter what you say. People can say, yeah, because of the leader. But I have to say it this way. I have to say it this way. Right? The National Alliance. The leader have never been in government and run this country by themselves. Never. Anytime they are in power, it's always a coalition government. They are always in a government with other parties, with other leaders. Always. We have never governed St. Martin by ourselves. Okay? So it is not fair, nor is it right, for you to lump up and clog up all the leaders as the same. The DP had 12 years uninterrupted to rule this consecutively, to rule this country by themselves. And Tio have been part of that government for all those years. And then I said, but let us look at it in a different way. Let us look at it in a different way. Right? Let's take the three leaders that we have now. Theo, Sarah, and William Marlin. And I don't like to bring people, children into it, but you just have to level it off. Since they are all the same. Right? Look at the wealth comparison of Theo, Sarah, and William. Look at it. Look at it good. Look at it. Look at the children. Compare Andy Westcott to Unde. Compare the both of them. Unde is an engineer. He has a degree. He went to school. The company, he's in partnership with Sylvia Matzer. But when they're building this thing, oh, the government give it. No, it's not true. It's a partnership. He works. He buy a little piece of land. Oh, he get this from him. How he get it? But no one questions Andy Westcott how he get his things. No one question it. Because we don't want we don't we don't want to level and be truthful with the leaders and, and, and the comparisons and say, but look, just look at it. Oh he arrogant. 
Okay, good. He arrogant. But let me say this. Right? Let me say this. I don't understand. I, I don't understand nothing that the good prime minister does say. Nothing. She could be talking about a remote control and goodness gracious. When the lady finish, you really want to know what it is she's talking about. You don't understand. I don't understand nothing that she says. And then again, everything that Tia Heidegger says is a lie. Everything. Everything he says is a lie. I tell you, when someone to his stature, to his caliber, could come up and say, the government we have now using the government coffers as their personal piggy bank. Hmm? That's like, that's like, that's like the Mexican drug lord. Okay? Telling the little boy on the street, man, he ain't no good. He's selling weed to them people and them. He's selling weed to children. You got to lock him up because he's selling weed. And you're like, you could believe he got a Darcy. He, the man got the gall to say that. And that's the only way I could put all three of them together. We have a hard time dealing with the truth. But we are living, we are living in a St. Martin. We all are complaining. We don't like it. We don't want to vote no more. We feel this way. We feel that way. This is the house that DP has built. Tia Heiliger has built. Has built it this way. They have built it in a way where friends and cronies, the Gomorrahs, get in. Because they latch on and they suck from the shark. That's how they get along. They go along to get along. So really and truly they are suckers. And these are the same suckers coming now dressing up and telling you. We want to work for the people. Boy, look, listen, St. Martin. Anytime, anytime you allow these guys to get back or get into office, we're going to be in trouble. We are going to have to pack up and they're going to ship us off to Tantama Island and that's going to be it for us because they believe that the island, especially Tia and the Wati family, believes that St. Martin belongs to them and only them. And only when they do something or when they are part of something, then it's good. Nobody else could do nothing. To me, that is sad. Okay? And now that it's sad because they think so, you know. It is sad that they actually believe so, and we make them believe that that is so. That is what is sad. But anyway, people, I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to call it a night. I want to thank you guys for logging on and being here with me again. Tomorrow, God spare, we're going to be back. Take care of yourself. God bless you guys. Goodbye. There was a time when people dare not utter a word. There was a time when people were in the dark and searching for accurate information. Just when all hope is lost and frustration hangs in the balance, XSM Talk emerges and broke the silence. Join host Christopher Emanuel for live and serious discussions and hard talk.